dudes, what's crack a lacking? I want to talk about uh, making your own guitars. making my own guitars when I reached a point I was no longer interested in buying a new guitar but I was still interested in finding what guitars speak to me and what things I really coveted and craved about certain guitars that were in some guitars bits that I liked and things in other guitars of bits of things that I liked so Please come along with the journey with me and let's discuss making your own guitar. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Okay, the guitar journey has to start with kind of the trinity of guitars here. So, Strat, Tele, Les Paul, and PRS, even though that isn't like a standard PRS. That is just a fancy ass, super awesome Epiphone, which really doesn't come into play in this conversation but it's still fancy ass and awesome. So let's start with the Strat, because I think most people that play guitar have a Strat. And this isn't a very standard Strat, but you get the idea, you know. I've kind of modded it, but it's a Strat. It's a three single coil electric guitar. It has a tremolo system. It's nice. Makes that quacky sound. Very buzzy when you get a lot of gain on it. Uh, then you move over to the telly, which is the slab of wood, you know. You could use this as a cutting board if you really wanted. It's very bare bones, tough as nails. In my opinion, the hardest guitar of the guitars I own uh, to play um, due to the both the Fenders having 25 and a half inch scale length necks. It's hard to bend notes. And this is a fixed bridge, right? So it's even harder to bend notes. And I like to play with tens, so that makes it even more difficult. Most fenders come with nine strings, nine gauge strings. So the Strat's a little bit easier to bend because it has springs in the tremolo. So when you bend it, you know, the tremolo comes and, and greets you a little bit. So brings in your bends for kind of a smooth landing. And then you have a Les Paul, which is the complete opposite end. So it's 24 and 3 quarters inch scale length. So bending notes on this thing is extremely easy. You know, it has this uh, tunematic bridge, which is all top loaded. So the string doesn't run through the body or anything. And the strings are really easy to bend on a Les Paul. And then you come to a PRS, which is essentially the guitar in between the two. It's a 25 inch scale length. And Paul at PR PRS, pretty much took these two guitars, right? These two guitars and made his own creation out of them. Everything about this guitar is kind of in between the two. And it is just a beautiful playing guitar. It's easier to bend than a Strat. It stays in tune better than a Les Paul. And it's kind of a perfect marriage of both. So this is kind of, for me, where, where guitar making starts is with these essential four guitars and really why the, the reason why I still have them because I love them and I love guitars and so these four are the ones that do it for me so now let's get into the specifics of things that I, I couldn't get without making a custom shop guitar so that's why I started making my own guitars so it, it starts with this Les Paul. So this is a natural finish Les Paul. This is, it, it essentially has no finish on it. So it, it essentially is a waxed finish guitar. It's stained and waxed finish. My affinity and love for that guitar and natural finish guitars starts here with that Les Paul. Everything of my guitar construction side of things with the woods is based around the love of this Les Paul. Now, 
when it comes to my guitars, I wanted to experiment with some neck wood. So I've kind of relegated all my guitar building to a, pretty much a Strat style body. I, I think that's the perfect ergonomic guitar for me that I like to use. And I just think they're the most comfortable guitar to play. So, I mean, comfort to me is important in a guitar. So most of my guitars, and they're all over here, that I have made are Strat style. Now, this one right here is a Tele style, right? With a baked maple neck, you know, natural finished, rosewood a fretboard. That's a mahogany body. Again, my love for the Les Paul. So it's kind of a marriage of the two. This is obviously like a Les Paul Jr. style guitar, but I wanted it to stay in tune, so I made it like a Tele. Uh, the guitar next to it, you know, this is essentially a Tele, you know, a hard rock Telecaster, essentially what it is, with uh, a nice flame maple cap, rosewood back, I'm sorry, not rosewood, mahogany back, and this is zebra wood. So it's just a fancy, beautiful guitar. Again, baked maple neck with the rosewood fretboard. Then I decided to make myself a, tradi a traditional Strat. Since I kind of neutered my original Strat, uh, these are straight, you know, single coils. This is an actual nitro finish in the body. So, you know, it's going to wear. This paint will come off. It's a soft finish. But I wanted to have one, so I decided to make myself one. If I was to buy this new from Fender, they want a million dollars for it. And it's not going to play as good as that. Now we get into my two live guitars that I use. So, again, it's essentially, you know, I wanted kind of that um, really nice blue color that they made in the 60s. And I kind of found a stain that it was pretty close to it that I, I just let it wear in. Look, it's kind of soaking under the wood. It's popping out, it's relicking itself. It's great. And it has the pickups and electronics. See, I've kind of taken parts of all the guitars. So it's, you know, I've, I've kind of aged all the hardware. It has the tele switching, tele knobs. I love those. They're bulletproof, two humbuckers, has some of the electrical, you know, it has the capacitor of the PRS. So I've kind of taken bits and pieces from all of them. And then this one is fancy in the sense that it has a neck made of winge. And it's, you can see it's very porous wood. Feels great to play. Again, all natural finished guitars. This one has, it has a Spalton maple uh, pick guard. Again, I've aged all the hardware. This is an African mahogany body with the wing gay. It, it just sounds great. All of them have my locking tuners that I love. These are all hip shots. Yeah, so you get the idea. I mean, each of these guitars, you know, when I, when I do, when I buy the body and I buy the necks and I get all the hardware and I get all the electronics, and the pick guards and, you know, plates and the springs and whatever whatever is entailed the tuners the nut they're running me about 750 800 bucks to make each one of these guitars my question to you guys is would a guitar like this would anyone be interested in buying a guitar like this i mean they're road worn guitars they're gonna wear naturally um, they're made with as nice a quality materials as i can buy um, that they sell. So, you know, stainless steel uh, blocks, you know, stainless steel saddles. This particular one is loaded with two Seymour Duncan pickups. You know, all the Tele hardware, CTS pots, uh, Switchcraft jack, uh, what is it, CLR? Is that what the switch is? The, the Tele switch. Yeah, and then I, I do a nice uh, contoured cut in the neck. Yeah, again, the uh, 
hip shot tuners on it, and then a real bone nut. You know, these aren't stainless steel frets. I don't know that you have to have stainless steel frets. It'd be nice, but when I bought these guitar necks, they didn't come with that. But these are quality made necks. The finish on these things are immaculate. It plays like butter. I, I just love how it holds a note, it resonates it. It's it's great. So what would this guitar be worth to one of you? If I made you one of these guitars, what would what would you pay for a guitar like this? Knowing that it costs me eight hundred bucks to make you a quality guitar. It takes me anywhere between, say, 8 to 12 hours to assemble, set up, stain, finish this guitar. Because I don't have nitrocellulose or a spray booth or any of that crap that I don't care about anyways. I don't want that stuff on the guitar. It just doesn't allow the, the instrument to breathe. Plus, it doesn't allow the instrument to wear. And it seems to me that every player that wants to play a guitar and get their DNA in the instrument, the only way it's really going to happen is to not have a bunch of finish to work through. And, you know, I'm in love with these guitars, not just because I made them, but because they're made exactly how I want a guitar to be made. And that is why um, I suggest to you or anyone else, go try to make your own guitar. It, it is it is so worth it. Um, you know, you'll, you'll probably make a few of them that are pretty bad. And then you're going to start getting good at it, you know. And then you'll, you'll, you'll be hooked. Once you make a couple of them and you make a good one, you're hooked. I don't know if this was informative. I don't know if I'm just jibber-jabbering, a bunch of nonsense. But uh, please like, subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next episode, jibber-jabbering about something else. Take care. See ya.